So 2 a.m. I'm going to call the uh, third uh, session of the meeting of the 82nd, I think, World Science Fiction Society that's cleaning the order. Um, and I am going to recognize uh, the, the head of site collection. So, there we go. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come up to the microphone. Science selection for 2026. Uh, we have a winner in terms of LA. They got 452 votes out of a grand total of uh, 531. A number of votes. <laughs> As you can see, and there were a number of no preference votes. Preferentially, and the other ones they didn't. So the first two are uh, not, not valid in that sense. Any questions? That's what they wrote. I, I, I don't think the site selection administrator has yet developed the powers to discern what everyone is thinking when they fill out the ballot. So, is it even possible to know that? Okay, uh, we are still in a business meeting, y'all. Is there anyone who has a question for the site selection administrator? Okay, seeing none, is there any... Yes, this will be um, available. The information, the information that are in the slides will be preferred in the minutes of this meeting. Seeing... Are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, is there any objection to thanking the tellers and ordering them to destroy the ballots? It is so ordered. Now, I believe some folks would like to tell us about a con they're running. have some 
supported us and done favors or, or went late night to pick up something to take it someplace else. And, and so this is just why I want these people to be here with me. So with that said, I want to welcome you to LA Con V. Yes, we'll be the LA Con 5, fifth in the tradition of Los Cons and seventh in World Con in Los Angeles metropolitan area. We are looking forward to seeing you all and hope that the 27th through the August 31st and 26th Anaheim, California in the United States. Um, Anaheim, as many of you know, is the home of Disneyland, but also so much more. The Anaheim Convention Center, which hosted the past three lost LA cons, will be home base, as will the Hilton Anaheim and the Anaheim Marriott Hotels. Now I'm absolutely thrilled to announce our guests of honor. We start, we start with the genuine LA treasure, Barbara Hambly, a writer who holds a credit as well as past president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers Association, or CIFLA. From the page to the screen, we are delighted to welcome Ronald D. Moore, the MVP body and two-time Hugo-winning screenwriter and producer who brought us the revival of Battlestar Galactica, plus Outlander for All Mankind, and of course, so much Star Trek, another California native. <laughs> Comics, New York Times best-selling cartoonist Colleen Doran. You know her work as a comics and graphics novelist, illustrator, penciler, inker, colorist, and working with the likes of Alan Moore, Anne Rice, Dave, Peter David, Neil Gaiman, and Terry Pratchett. Dr. Anita Gupta. She's a scientist and engineer who has worked on NASA, on the Dawn spacecraft, the Mars rover, Curiosity, and even a project called um, Cloud, Cloud Atom Laboratory on the International Space Station. She's now a proponent for the hydrogen-powered flight, a huge sci-fi fan, and also an Los Angeles native. There's also Hugo Award-winning illustrator Tim Kirk, again a Los Angeles treasure. Yeah. Tim has won awards for both fan and professional art. He's worked with the Walt Disney Company, and he's even a Disney Imagineer. A great way to celebrate our Anaheim location. <laughs> lovely, another best longtime fan and convention supporter, Jerry Sullivan, is our here. <laughs> And it's an honor long deserved. We are also welcoming a very special guest, the Eisner Award Hall of Fame inductee, Stan Sakai. Stan is a celebrated artist and creator in Sagi Ojumbo, heavily influenced by Japanese cinema and history, but touching into the world of fantasy. He's a legend in our town, and, we, and let me tell you, he's one of my favorites, so, and we can't wait to see him. <laughs> And finally, we are over the moon to announce our Toastmaster, none other than the illustrator and creator, Ursula Vernon. Sometimes <laughs> is up at dawn in Chicago to make sure everything goes live as well. So I have a great team working for me right now. <laughs> I believe that this is um, this is a quick way to finish our conversation. This, that, this is my quick, I can't talk all of a sudden. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I believe this is the time we're allowed to respond to questions for the floor, but we're very happy to do so. But I'd also like to invite you to consider asking those questions at our table today, tomorrow, or at our party this evening. The business meeting still has a large number of agenda items they need to get through, and I'd like to help them out as much as possible. Once again, thank you so much for this great honor, and we look forward to showing you a wonderful time in 2026. And I, if you have questions that can't wait, you can ask them now, correct? Yes, so I'm going to ask you, so per our standing rules, we have 15 minutes of question and answer time for both 2025 and 2026. I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to shorten that to five minutes each. Are there any objections? Hearing none, is there any questions for 2026? Cool. Oh, wait, there's one behind us. Thank you. Uh, yes, do you have a mark protection committee member selected? I do. 
And I have a fallback because we may have one of the gentlemen I have selected um, on the ballot to become a member. So. Yeah, I'll tell everybody. Okay, so if that wasn't in the microphone, we will find out the answer after validating. Yes. Uh, if you have not already pre-supported us and voted and you need to upgrade, you may come to our fan table this weekend and we can help you that there. If you have not voted uh, registered at all, you can go to lacon.org and you go to the registration at that location. I have a PR zero, and there's some people back here with them that will be happy to hand them out. I'm going to interrupt yeah. really quickly. Sorry. Can somebody who's very nice go see if they can grab like some cloth napkins from the bar area? Sure. So we don't have too much of a technical breakdown up here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. Seeing I have no more questions, am I good to go, Jesse? Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you. Is there anyone here from 20? Is there anybody here from Seattle 2025 who's available to answer questions? Okay. Thank you. Is there any or are there any questions for Seattle 2025? <laughs> Got it? Okay. Right, nice, nice. <laughs> I just want to say hey, y'all. You can have a whole stack if you'd like. Well, I can. Please try to limit the chatter in the room. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a target date. To can up. you restate the question? Uh, the question was when do we plan to open up the hotel block? Um, Thank you. We have a target date. Not precise date, but we're targeting October for our five hotels. Information about our five contracted hotels and the rates are available on the website as I have them for the past year. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Blue mic, please. Yes, that's not like so. Um, Andrew Adams, is it through your planning to, to run a partially virtual hybrid business meeting? Um, if so, is there anything we can do to persuade you to, at the very least, um, conduct uh, extensive consultations with people in this room and others before you make a final decision to do so? There have been no... Would you like, um, would you like me to answer the question? Or you can take it, either way. Sure, go ahead and answer that question. <laughs> okay, I have been asked to be the business meeting chair for Seattle. There have been conversations about the possibility of doing an online meeting. There have been no final decisions. Anything would be with extensive consultation, including with the uh, study committee that we created yesterday. Yeah. Seems like that was yesterday. Yeah. On behalf of last night's masquerade participants, have you appointed a masquerade director yet? That is a great question. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that'd be a great question for our events division head if he was here in Glasgow. I don't know. I don't believe so. I haven't heard, which is a clue, but I don't actually know the answer. Right. So we're not yet. Thank you. Given the mobility issues of many people in the business meeting, can you please announce where the business meeting will be before you open up the hotel? Yeah. Yeah, we have a plan for where the business meeting will be. Uh, we have some space set aside in the signature room, which is on the fifth floor of the uh, Summit Convention Center. Oh. It is a gorgeous room. It will be the, if, if it is in fact, held there, it would be the nicest room that the business room has been in, I think, in a very long time. But uh, all plans as far as space allocation are, you know, just plans tentative at this time. See, no more questions. Hope to see you in Seattle in 2025. Um, so, well, first I was going to do an announcement. Okay, so, uh, for those
those of you who have not uh, stopped by the business meeting yet, I just want to do some quick introductions so you know who all of these people are. Um, my name is Jesse Lip. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I am the chairperson. My form of address is mixed chair or mixed chairperson. Uh, we have Linda Zimmeroff, she, her, serving as emergency holographic secretary as Alex Axe, they, them, is unfortunately uh, stuck in their hotel room with uh, COVID. So thank you so much to Linda for stepping in at the last minute. Um, and we hope Alex is doing well. Um, then we have Martin Pine, he, him, who is serving as our parliamentarian. Warren Buff, he, him, who is deputy presiding officer. Ira Alexandra, they, them, who is serving as our timekeeper. Um, out, well, right at the door there is Chris Hensley, he, him, who is serving as our floor manager. And not official business meeting staff, but super helpful person is Ron Oaks, which I believe is he, him, um, who has been helping out with tech stuff. Um, and uh, sadly, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean is Jared Dashoff, he, him, who has been serving as our advisor. I mean, he's happy to be across the Atlantic Ocean. He's not bothered about it. I am. Um, so that is uh, the team that we have. Um, we have ballots for the Mark Protection Committee, as well as the Committee on Investigation that was um, created yesterday. Those are out in our little lobby area. Um, we will be closing the balloting at 1030. Um, so I would encourage folks who have not yet done so um, to go grab a ballot. And I will also just remind folks that um, our secretary didn't bring tech thinking they were going to be secretary, so your grace is appreciated when we have stuff happening up here. Um, yes. It's a question of privilege. It's a question of privilege affecting the assembly. Next year, person, could you? Oh, thank you. I forgot I was tapped down. Uh, next year, person, could you please remind people on how to fill out a preferential ballot? In specific, the, uh, the question that I heard being tossed around is, do I just stop at three or do I keep going? Um, thank you. So you, I mean, you can stop at three if you want to, um, but you can also keep going. Um, you can rank as many um, folks as you wish, or as few folks as you wish. It's rather similar to this thing called the Hugo Awards that some of you might be familiar with how we vote for. Um, so yes, our balloting is done by a preferential ballot. Um, okay, so to summarize what we did yesterday, um, after we dispensed with the D's, sorry, I'm hearing chatter in the room, I just want to make sure that we're okay. Okay. Um, yesterday, after we dispensed with the D's, um, we moved on to our new constitutional changes and the first pass of that. Um, I would like to let you all know that, uh, according to the timestamps in the Discord, it uh, we got through the first pass of F1 through F11 in 45 minutes, y'all. So we are going to start up with the uh, first pass starting with F12. I am going, because I know folks are balloting, I am going to give you all five minutes to um, retrieve ballots, cast the vote, if you need a quick bio break, all of that. So. I'm not quite going to call it a recess, but we're going to call it a pause. Yeah, we're going to stand at ease until 1025. Did you get your ballots? <coughs> you got, you got your ballots. <laughs> I will reiterate this as a point of personal privilege when the meeting is more formally back in session. But uh, please be careful, especially when the meeting is in session, with standing or walking down this middle aisle. We have the two streaming cameras at the back there. And if anyone is standing at the rear or walking down this middle aisle, 
It can seriously obscure the cameras for the front, especially the camera focus on this chair. Thank you. So to be clear, um, at 10.30, the floor manager, if you want to go put your ballots in the bag, now you can. At 10.30, um, the floor manager is going to come in and collect the ballots if for folks that are still holding on to theirs. Reminded, um, and my apologies. Uh, I have been reminded, and my apologies, that there um, is no specific space for writing candidates on the ballot. That is still something you can do. Um, if you would like to write a name on the back and rank it, we will uh, record that. And my apologies for forgetting to include a write-in space when I was creating the ballot last night. I'm sorry about that. to um, get me moving. Um, so it's been requested that I remind people where we ended up with F11, um, which is where we ended yesterday. So um, the secretary could get, the secretary will tell me if I'm incorrect, but I believe that we tried to divide it and we didn't because I said we couldn't. And then we tried to postpone it and we didn't. And then we tried to refer it and we didn't. And so it's before us as it is in the agenda once we return to it. Um, so essentially we didn't do anything at 11, is what we did yesterday. Um, so for those who were not here yesterday, as a reminder, so we are in the first pass, because I, I have still yet not been given a better name for it. Um, and so during the first pass, the uh, debate on the main motion is not in order. 
the motion to amend in all of its forms is not in order. The, per unanimous consent of the body yesterday, the motion to refer to committee to report back next year is in order, though not something like committee of the whole. Um, and debate time for both motions to postpone indefinitely and to refer to committee is automatically set at two minutes. Um, also, motions to take up items out of order or to postpone until a definite time will not be in order. So, basically, what this, the function of this is, is to somewhat quickly go through these items, figure out which things we want to postpone indefinitely, refer to committee, and which ones we want to actually take up today. Yes. Mixed Chair Kevin Stanley, he, him. Yes, those of you who were here yesterday know this, but I believe there are a few extras. Is the motion to object to consideration available at this uh, during the first pass? Yes. Any motion that was not explicitly that is not explicitly prohibited is in order with the qualification that, as stated in the agenda, if you're trying to do a thing that's going to ensnare us, I will still rule that out of order since the point is to not get ensnared. Yes. Harry and Lurie Schieber, point of information. What is the difference between postpone indefinitely and object to consideration? Okay. Uh, the motion to postpone indefinitely requires a two-thirds vote and is debatable. And if it passes, and debate can go into the merits of the main motion, and if it passes, the item is postponed until the heat death of the universe and is there not no longer before this body. The motion to object to consideration um, is in order only immediately when the item comes up. If you wish to object to consideration, you can do so by just standing up and, and saying that you object to consideration. It is not debatable, um, and it requires a three-quarter vote of the body, and if it passes, the um, item is immediately killed. Is that clear? Okay, are there any other questions about the process before us? It, it yes? Quarter uh, first of privilege, since it's 10.30, because we go ahead and collect the ballot. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Yep, it's 10.30, and so while we get started, the uh, floor manager is going to come through with the bags to collect ballots. So, the item before us is F12, site selection by the Worldcon community, which is on a page that I'm finding. 44, thank you. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about F12? Uh, is it not on? Is it on now? Okay. Harry and Lori Sheher, I move to postpone indefinitely. Second. Okay. Quick word. Uh, it was my understanding, based on conversations, that there are members interested in objecting to consideration for this item, and if they wish to do so, they would need to do so now prior to before we could hear a motion to postpone indefinitely. All right. Mr. Person, I would like to. I move, I move that we object to consideration for okay. this item. Seconded. Okay. The, I have not yet. I have not yet. Stated the motion to postpone indefinitely, if I remember correctly, and so therefore it is in order for the member to withdraw it, and therefore it is in order for Chris Hensley to object to consideration of the motion. As a reminder, just so we're clear, if you wish to object to consideration, when I state the item, you can't just stand up and say, object to consideration of the motion, and that's the proper way to do that so that you get in first. Um, okay, so the motion, uh, the F.12, Chris Hensley has objected to consideration, and that has been seconded. This is not debatable and requires a three-quarters vote. All those in favor of not considering the motion, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? That was not a three-quarters vote. I think it might not have been a majority. Um, and so it does not pass. And so uh, the motion is still before us. Harry and Lori Sheher, I move to uh, postpone indefinitely. Seconded. The, uh, it has been moved and seconded to postpone F12 indefinitely. Debate time is automatically two minutes. Do you wish to speak to it? Yes, I do. 
Um, I think this is a terrible idea that purposefully disenfranchises WISPRS members who are either not wealthy enough, not well enough, or unable to get travel documents to vote on things. And this is a terrible, terrible idea, and we should kill it now. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, I'm going to recognize Mr. Easterly as the maker of the motion. Uh, Donald Eastley, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to foreshadow that uh, assuming the objection to consideration fails, I plan to move to divide the question. There are two different items here. Uh, secondly, I think this is a great idea. I mean, why are World Cons what they are? It's because of the World Con community. The great extent of the people who are in this room, which to a great extent are people who attend the World Con. Essentially, there seems to be a big motion today in this uh, side selection and there's other aspects towards unbounded virtual voting. Well, we've seen what that does. That's why Chengdu was selected. There were over 1,500 ballots produced by people. Well, produced, all of which have names on them, but you know, it's not clear that they were ever really signed by the people, the people even know they were signed. It's, not, it's pretty clear that those people didn't pay the voting fees. Allow, I'll organize the maker, or you, sorry. I'll organize the maker of the motion. That part of Don's statement was Yes. Um, the the member the point of order is that the especially final portion of the speech was not in order. Or, I, if, uh, if, if it makes allegations of people who can be easily identified. Or how can they be identified? Okay, hold on. This is not a debating society. Not a debating society. <laughs> not like that, y'all. Uh, so the member's point is that because the debate includes allegations about specific people or groups of people, that it is not in order. My sense is that it was it was certainly on the line, but I believe the debate was in order, but I will encourage the body as it debates this issue, both during the motion to postpone indefinitely and should there be further debate, to be very careful in how we talk about members of our society and um, allegations of conduct. Okay, that was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Um, in the back there. John. Garrett Kavanagh, he, him. Mixed chairperson, my objection to this motion is that it disenfranchises people like myself who do come to Worldcon but cannot travel to many Worldcons. I'm a friend, super friend for Dublin 2029, which I will not be able to vote for if this motion passes as it, as by the time the vote comes up I will not be suitable. That was a speech again. Is there for, in favor, sorry, of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um back with the yellow shirts. Or yellow on your shirts. We have nine seconds remaining against Nicolai Blum he him. The uh, statement that uh, travel is required for this uh, is not true because the um, people can have voted in person beforehand, so I feel that it does not disfranchise anyone. Thank you. Time. Please, 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 please bring your badge to the secretary. Right, time against has elapsed. How much time do we have in remaining in favor? 24 seconds. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I am going to. Rem no, that was. That was a speech in favor of the motion, but against postponing indefinitely. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to recognize. And you can't come back up here until we're done with the item. Just as a reminder. Good morning, Warren Buff. He, him. Mixed chairperson, I do believe this discourages new participants in our community. And we have gained many wonderful new participants by good get-out-the-vote drives. And 
locations that have not had road comments before, particularly including the Helsinki bid, which defeated my bid for DC in 2017. And I think that them <coughs> driving out the vote Time. was a good thing. Okay. Time for debate has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. If you are in favor of postponing indefinitely consideration of F.12, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? I'm going to say the motion passes. Okay, and so F.12, is, is somebody calling for division? Okay. If, if you want to call for division, please do so loudly and proudly rather than me just having to pick it up from the fact that there are murmurings. Okay, we've, it's been called for division, so we are going to take a standing counted vote. So I will ask in a moment everyone in favor to stand up. Uh, the floor manager will count off in sequence and the floor manager will help us do that. Yes. Information. This is a vote to dismiss this motion. Yes. yes, it is still the same vote that we just took to postpone indefinitely. We're just making sure we got the count correct. Is there another question or? The, I'm sorry, oh, the voting card, sorry, yes. You'll either stand or raise your voting card um, and the floor manager will help us count off and then we will, once that's done, we will do the same for those against. So, all those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please stand. One, two, three, four, five, six,
If you wish to bring it on order, you would need it to report back at a reasonable time, have a reasonable yeah. and have a reasonable um, number of people making up no, the codes. We're still in the we're still in the past. Well, uh, shall we say 2026? Uh, we sorry, by a reasonable time, it has to be next year. Okay. Ne next year, uh, college people. I, I do volunteer, otherwise, oh, well, chair, Chair's election of members, I am, however, happy to volunteer. Wait, is there a second? Okay. Check over the Point of privilege? Yes. You. May I, my vote on the last one, I thought we were voting on something different. So, my vote would be different. Yeah, the vote, okay. the vote total is already in the same, so it is really. Okay, it has been moved in. Did, wait, I'm sorry. It's been moved to refer to committee to report back next year with a made up of five members appointed by me. Was there a second? Second. Yeah, Chair, on point of order. Yes. I believe the gentleman was effectively moving to reconsider. Oh, you could Sir, reconsider. Brandy, did you vote on the previous item? I did, and so I'd like to move to vote to reconsider the vote. Well, hey, 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 this isn't a group chat. We're checking something. Give us one moment. It is only or in order to reconsider a vote on postpone indefinitely if um, the prevailing side was in the affirmative. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. So the motion to refer to Seattle has been moved and seconded, or to sorry, to a committee to report back to the Seattle Business Meeting. My apologies. Has been moved and seconded. Um, does the member wish to speak to it? Very briefly, we have a lot of things to consider uh, at this business meeting. I do not think this is an urgent item for consideration. It can almost certainly be brought back next year. Let us consider it next year after a committee has had time to kick it back. Maybe take into account some of the things that were raised during the motions to postpone indefinitely. Okay, how is the speech in favor of referral? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Point of inquiry. Alan Fleming, he, him. How much time do we have on this debate? Uh, so, debate on both postpone indefinitely and refer to committee is set at two minutes by default. So, one minute on each side. Um, I'll recognize Mr. Adams in the back. <coughs> Adams, he, him, which chairperson. While I'm not necessarily favourable with details of this motion, and I actually would like it eventually to go to committee, I think it would be very helpful if we'd have the sense of this meeting before we sent it to committee so we can have some extra guidance for that committee for reconsideration for possibly reintroducing it next year. So I object to referring it to committee now and would support doing so after some uh, debate later in this meeting. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? fairly obvious from the, the vote totals at uh, the front of them. Uh, 
uh, was spoken about at length with our, the, the meeting is all the ways ready to go, no, we don't want this. Okay, does the speech in favor of referral? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? She, her. I agree this is a terrible idea, but I think we can kill it now and don't have to form another committee. Yeah. Okay. We have 23 seconds remaining for and 30 seconds remaining against. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I need to ask the, especially the front rows to not chatter. <laughs> Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of referral? I, um, this is Ann Rill. I am in favor of referral because I believe that this is phrased very confusingly and I think it needs more investigation, especially because of the record keeping me involved. Right. Um, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Rick Kowalczyk, him. I think it's very clear uh, that this is going to be a record-keeping disaster, and we should just kill this now and not refer it. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? We have 10 seconds in favor. I move to suspend the rules and immediately call the question on the substance of this matter. Second and motion. Okay. okay. It has been moved to suspend the rules and immediately vote on the substance of this matter. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable. So what we are voting on is if this requires a two-thirds vote, and if it passes, we will immediately move to a vote on F.12, not on referring, not on postponing, not on anything else, just a straight up or down vote on F.12. Are we clear? Yes. Okay. No, wait, no. Sorry. Okay. You're allowed. That's fine. Don't need to apologize. Point of problem, you're going to hear you. Sorry, I guess I need this one person like. Uh, Kate Seacor, she, her, if the motion to suspend the rules passes and the item is approved if during that time, that is the same as if we had passed it as part of our main floor debate, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. That was a two-thirds vote, and the motion passes. And so we are going to immediately move to a vote on F.12 after the secretary is ready. Okay. All those in favor? And I, so I want to be very clear. We are voting straight up or down on F.12. This is the final vote on F12, unless we get weird later. Um, all those in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Madam, this, this yes. Chair, can you please explain to people exactly what they're voting on? That's, that's, what, they're that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're doing. Okay. The item before us is F.12. If we are voting whether we wish to adopt F.12. If we adopt it, it will go to Seattle for ratification just like any other new constitutional change that we might um, adopt at this meeting. If, it, if the motion fails, it fails and it will go away. Blow away in the wind. Yes. This is in order to move to divide the question. It is not in order to move to divide the question because we suspended the rules to immediately vote on F12. And so that is the item before us. Yes. The uh, vote total required to pass this would be a majority vote. So it's not 50% plus one. It's, that's only if it's an even number. 
Um, but a majority vote will be required for passage. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of F.12, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. And the motion is defeated. And F.12 um, is defeated. I okay. We are going to move to item F.13, location, location, location. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? I move to object to consideration. Okay. Second. Objection of the consideration was moved by Chris Rose and has been seconded. Yep. This is neither debatable nor amendable. And Kevin Stanley, he, him, uh, mature person who I think objection to consideration does not require a second. Well, it was seconded whether it required it or not. Um, no, that's very fair. No, I did imply that, and you are correct. It does not require a second. Um, do you have a question? There's a short mic, please. You Linda Robinhead, uh, she, her. I am unfamiliar with the terminology. Does this objection to consideration mean we're just ta not tabling it, but getting rid of it? <coughs> yes. I was. I was going to clarify. I was waiting for the secretary to catch up. So, Chris Rose has objected to consideration of the motion. Whether it was seconded is irrelevant. Um, this is neither debatable nor amendable and requires a three-quarters vote. Should the vote pass, then the item will go away and is immediately killed. Should the vote not pass, it will still be before us. Are we clear? Further parliamentary inquiry. Given the closeness of a previous vote with the chair, um, please clarify whether these two-thirds and three-quarters votes are precisely two-thirds and three-quarters or over two-thirds and three-quarters. So the question is whether two-thirds and three-quarters votes are precisely two-thirds and three-quarters or over two-thirds and three-quarters. And I believe they're over. No, they are exact. You're right. They are exact. Sorry. I got confused because I was just talking about majority and the whole thing. Sorry. They are exact. Um, so a vote of three and two. No, I can't do that. Never mind. I'm not going to do it. 75 out of 100, there we go, would be three quarters. Thank you. Wow, I swear I'm an accountant. Um, okay, so the item before us is objection to consideration of F.13. All those in favor of not considering F.13, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, sure. All those. I take the point that was from the member and I will phrase it better. I'm sorry. All those in favor of consideration of the motion, please raise your hands. Thank you. That was not a three quarters vote and objection to consideration fails. Is there anyone else wishing to make a motion about F.13? Mr. Chairperson, I move to postpone indefinitely. It has been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely. Do you wish to speak to it? I actually do, but I really, it's more generic. Uh, the reason that I oppose uh, objection to consideration, having dealt with that in this body in the past, objection to consideration are things that are embarrassing to the body or are otherwise not appropriate for public discussion. Uh, however, postpone indefinitely, which is actually easier, is for our control of the agenda, and I think this does not belong on this year's agenda. Okay, thank you. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? As a reminder, to make time is set at two minutes. Person in the back.
Nikolai Plum, he, him. If we are not to debate this here, then where are we ever to debate this? This is a motion about making sure that the World Science Fiction Convention um, operates in a place where it can, in fact, operate, where people are reasonably safe, reasonably free, with a simple minimum standard. And we should definitely debate this here. And that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? John Pomeranz, he, him. Uh, I'll answer the member's question for the body. Uh, at the site selection is the answer to your question, sir. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? And while Josh is coming to the front, I will remind the body that um, please do not stand or raise the card to be recognized until after I have finished asking if there is um, anyone wishing to speak in favor or against. This is to help me help you and be fair about um, making sure that I'm being fair and picking who to speak. Joshua Cronenthal, he, him. Clearly, at the ballot box doesn't work universally because it failed once. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Can you bring the mic, please? It's not necessary. Fandom learns from its mistakes. I cite the example. I cite the example. I cite the example of the Uganda bid, which is now the Rwanda bid, specifically because of the question of LGBTQ. We don't need it because we don't need it. Ten seconds. Thank you. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely, and I will remind the body to stay in order when other members are speaking. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Three seconds. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, um, uh, the body roll, uh, we need to make sure and discuss this rather than just sweep it under the rug and hope for the best in the future. Can you bring the badge to the secretary? Okay. And that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. And time in favor allowed. Okay, and there are eight seconds remaining in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Look at the person in the far back. Said, I'm the only one of the few people here that seem to bitter in civil war. But if you decide to stay, to shut people out and find them, they don't get any new ideas. Time. So, if we don't do it, we Time for speech has elapsed. That was a speech in favor. We have 25 seconds now. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? she, her. It is clear that standards need to be enacted to preserve safety, and we as a body deserve to debate them. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? 15 seconds are remaining. I think we should refer this to committee, therefore I vote vote against the Okay. That was a speech against. I believe we have like maybe five seconds. Eleven seconds. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Okay, seeing none, we'll move 
You are wishing to speak again? Okay, so you have 11 seconds. This is a really simple uh, way to make sure that we do not end up in an authoritarian country again where we will not have control over our administrative processes. Time, that's, mm. I'm going to remind the body, I'm going to remind the body that they, when we are talking about, when debate is entering into discussions of things that may or may not have happened, to keep your debate quite narrow in order to remain in order and not make allegations or insinuations which would be out of order and improper. Okay, time uh, in, on both sides has elapsed and so we will move to a vote. The item before us is postponing indefinitely F.13 requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against. Thank you. That is not a two-thirds vote. The motion does not pass. Is there anyone else wishing to make a motion on FDOT 13? John Pomeranzi, him. I move that this matter be referred to a committee um, specific to this particular motion rather than one that already exists, uh, you, appointed by the chair. Do you have any feelings on like members and members or anything? You don't have I do to. Not. Okay. I do not. I leave it to the discretion of the chair. Report back at the next business meeting, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me be clear. At next year's business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there is a second. It has been moved and seconded. I'm going to ask members who are having conversations to do so quiet enough that I can't hear them. Um, it has been moved and seconded to refer to a committee um, that I would appoint uh, at thought 13 to report back to next year's business meeting. Debate time is automatically set at two minutes if you wish to speak to it. It, it won't surprise anybody I, I voted to postpone indefinitely. I appreciate the sentiment that underlies this, and I am concerned about uh, uh, the possibility of Worldcon being held in places that I would find objectionable. I am concerned that I should not be, nor should other people be, the ones to find things objectionable. And we need to figure out how to do that before we willy-nilly pass on first past a constitutional amendment to this effect. I urge us to give this some more thought, and a committee is the right way to do that at this point. Please pass this. That was a speech in favor of referral to committee. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Dr. Adams. I'm proud of him him. We keep referring to things to committee without getting a sense of people in this meeting. I realize we have a very long agenda this year, but I really think we need some debate on these issues before we come them to committee. We have a serious set of situations which generated this really long agenda, and we keep throwing things to committee without even getting a sense of the people in this room, who are going to be the same ones mostly, debating whatever comes out of those committees. Let's get some sense of this committee, uh, this meeting's feelings about these things, and then put them to committee, please. That was the speech against referral to committee. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the purple. Yeah, it's Tammy. I'm trying to do better about not calling some people by name and some people not. Tammy Coxon, she, her. Um, I believe we should be uh, putting some constraints in place about who is allowed to bid. I don't think this proposal is the best way to do that. I think it would be good to explore more ideas um, and come back to uh, the business meeting with a suggestion and the committee would be positioned to do that. Uh, to the prior speaker, um, that that point, um, we don't have time. We're not going to get to this agenda item if we uh, try to do it in this meeting. I hear that knowing this as the meeting would be good, but we, we're not going to get there. Time. That was a speech in favor of referral, and time in favor has now elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak again? Okay. 
My mum, he, him. Sorry. Uh, this is a well constructed motion with a narrow, low set of criteria that any even vaguely reasonable country or location ought to meet. It is not necessary to punt this to a committee in order to further refine it. We can simply vote on it as it is. Thank you. I want to speak against referral. How much time is remaining again? 15 seconds. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? on both sides has elapsed and so we will move to a vote. The item before us is referral of F.13 to a committee to be appointed by me. Is there any, or, sorry, are we clear? Okay, all those in favor of referral, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Believe the motion passes. Okay, and the motion is referred to committee. You're calling for division? Okay. Oh. So we're going to do another standing counted vote. Are we all clear on the process for this? Okay. All those in favor of referral to committee, please stand or raise the card. that 
we say referral committee will still be in order, but only existing committees on the first pass. Okay. Uh, and. So then I'm going to ask the sense of the body. Um, I feel at this point that we are not saving time on the first pass and we need to move into ratification and then substantive debate on new changes. I'm not seeing anyone jumping up and down and saying don't do that. So that's what we're going to do. Yes? I don't remember what was, but sure. Yes. Harry and Marie Schaefer, I would like to move that the body request that, that the chairperson appoint at least one person from a potentially affected country to the newly created committee. All okay. right. Is there any objection to the body uh, directing me to appoint at least one person from a potentially affected country to the F.13 committee? It would be my discretion to determine what a potentially affected country would be. And, and finding a full Well, yes, it would, they would need to consent to it. Do we need a motion for what you suggested that Well, first I need to handle the thing that I'm currently in the middle of. So, is there any objection to the body directing me to a point with consent, somebody from an affected country to the F-13 committee with me determining what counts as an affected committee. Is there an objection? Yes. Okay. So, was there a second for the member's motion? Second. Okay, I'm going to set debate time on this to zero minutes. Is there any objection to zero minutes? <laughs> Hearing none, the wait time is set at zero minutes. All those in favor of directing me to appoint a person to the F-13 committee from an affected country with consent and me determining what counts as an affected country, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, thank you. And the motion passes. Okay, uh, and Mr. Stanley, no, I don't need a motion. I'm taking the objection and sense of the body that we're going to be moving into ratification so we can deal with those and then deal with constitutional changes and we are done with the first ish pass. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I think that's the best. Parliamentary inquiry are PI and objective considerations still in order given that we're abandoning the first pass? So per the standing rule change that we created, um, it is in order to postpone it and enact it immediately. The first time something comes up at a main business meeting, it is in order to postpone it indefinitely. And I believe our rules would actually constrain when we can object to consideration. Well, yeah, it's constrained by Robert's rules that you have to do it first. But I don't believe we have constraints on when, what kind of meeting that can occur at. So yes, that would also be in order the first time an item comes up. Okay. So we are going to move to a ratification of new constitutional changes, or constitutional changes passed on, rather. Thank you, Chair. Yes. I will ask the secretary to stay in order. Chair, let's then be him. I move to amend the agenda and handle all of the the newly proposed amendments. That is, I believe, Foxtrot. Prior to business pass on, echo. No. Okay. Okay. So the echo in Foxtrot was referring to E and F, meaning the sections of the agenda. That's what that was. Because I think there was some confusion there. So. It has been moved to uh, amend the agenda to uh, take up all of the business passed on after the new constitutional changes. I'm going to rule that out of order because the ratifications are special orders 
per Roberts rules that states that when our bylaws require us to take up motions at a certain meeting, which the next business meeting would be one, they are special orders. Yes. If we had hypothetically uh, ratified constitutional change first, would that affect those business amendments passed on as well? If we had ratifications and business passed on are the same thing. I, I apologize. I don't mean to clarify. Constitutional amendments is what I meant. Sorry. I'm sorry. So if we, if we change the constitution first, are we then able to handle business passed on the same way that we would have That's a great question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
committees are using things without authorization <coughs> because it's not in writing. In addition, I would note that the second part of the amendment is basically to generalize the language to handle all conventions that this uh, manages in any way. Uh, that's merely an editorial issue in my opinion. But in any event, there are people out there complaining. They may not be the people you know. They're probably not any of the people in this room. But it has been happening. Client privilege? We need to switch the camera on we need to switch. I right just focus on you. You don't like my face? Discord doesn't like your face. Oh, Discord, come on. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, tech says they've done it. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I do need to recognize you to do that, but you were the only person standing. So the motion, uh, the question has been called. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. On, we don't need to vote on calling the question if there's nobody wishing to speak, so we're moving to a vote on E.1. All those in favor of ratifying E.1, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And the motion passes. We are now going to take up item E.2, business meeting contingencies, also on page 22. I'm suggesting a debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Not only least like EM, but don't worry, I won't speak to everything. Uh, <laughs> both E1 and E2 came from our protection committee last year. Anyway, E2 is basically just to provide uh, what can be done in case uh, a world con can't be held, or there can't, isn't a business meeting, or isn't a corporate uh, business meeting that can really conduct business. Uh, there have been years during World War II when there were no world cons. There have been uh, several world cons overseas, which has been very hard to uh, speak together people to hold a business meeting validly and this just has obvious provisions where in that case things just sort of get carried on to the next year. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mixed cha chairperson, my name is Ken Boom and once again in the interest of trying to keep the Constitution as short, simple, and straightforward as possible, and in the interest of not specifying in great detail procedures that are mostly not going to be handled. Uh, this having recently, as, as recently as, as Con Zealand, been, 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 been occurred and been handled properly, uh, without this information, without this uh, verbiage, I don't think we should continue to add to the Constitution this way. Okay, that was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? And Adam C. Nevin, Mr. Chairperson, as a very senior member of the Conseiling Committee, I would disagree with the uh, previous member's statement that it was not needed. There were very significant situations and we faced precisely the problems here. We managed to avoid them occurring, but that was by the skin of our teeth. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Previous question? Second. The previous question has been called and seconded. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. This is a vote on E.2. All those in favor of E.2, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, and the motion passes. The next item before us is E.3, consistent change. I'm going to recommend a debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of E.3, consistent change, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. <coughs> yep. We're going to give the secretary a moment. 
our next item will be E.4 convention time bracket on page 24. time bracket, I'm going to recommend a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Points for the Yes. <coughs> Andrew Adams, he here. Would an amendment to this which moved the date, the earliest date, earlier be regarded as a lesser change or would it require a ratification? Since the current state of the Constitution is, oh, no, you were speaking the mic, I don't need to restate it, never mind, okay. Uh, since the current state of the Constitution is no restriction on dates, my ruling would be that an amendment expanding the date window would be a lesser change as it does not deviate more from the Constitution than the current change is. So yes, it would be a lesser change. Uh, point of information, Perry and Larry Sheher. Could someone please tell the body what is specified in 2.6? Yeah, sure. So I'm pull it up. Uh, 2.6, gotta get past the threes. 2.6, incapacity of committees. This is the, with sites being selected two years in advance, there are always two selected current or future Worldcon committees. If one of them is unable to perform its duties, the other selected or current, current future Worldcon committee shall determine what action to take. And then it talks about a business meeting or a meal full of whispers and such. So this is, it's the incapacity of committee section. Is that enough information? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? Okay. Is there? Are you talking about the proposed amendment? There is no amendment on the floor. There's just a question about the possibility of one. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? I will remind the body that the question was about lesser changes, but, or sorry, the question was about lesser changes and not other things, but because it wasn't provided in the agenda, an amendment to a ratification does require a two thirds vote of the body to um, adopt or permit, to consider, and then majority to adopt. Andrew Adams, PM. Make sure, person, that I move to amend this to uh, substitute 1st of June rather than 20th of June. I think this is just a little too restrictive. Second. It's been moved and seconded to strike 20 June and replace with 1st of June. <coughs> and it has been seconded. So as I stated, this will require a two-thirds vote on behalf of it will require a two-thirds vote in order to even consider it. So we will take that both vote first. All those in favor of considering this motion, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, the motion passes and we can consider it. I did hear a second. So the item before us is an amendment to E.4 to strike 20 June and replace with 1st June. I will rule this. A do I rule it before or after? I'll do now. I'm going to rule this a lesser change. Is there, um, debate time is automatically set to five minutes, except that we don't have that much. So it's going to be the total of 145 or whatever we have left. 151. So half and half for that. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Who should call the question? Yes. Second. 
That is not in order. Does the member wish to move to suspend the rules and call the question? Sure. Okay. Is it, is it on all that is before us or just the amendment? Okay, if it's on just the amendment, is there anyone wishing to speak on the amendment? Okay, then. Okay, yes, and there was somebody else I saw. Okay. Um, so it is generous. So I'm going to say because you were only moving to do it on the amendment, I'm going to rule that it would not save us time to actually take the vote on calling the amendment because we're just going to handle the debate. So. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Oh. Hey, everyone else. Um, I know that uh, these dates were considered uh, with regard to the Hugo nominations and balloting and notification process, and um, doing that in less than six months is pretty fast. I don't think cutting it by the three weeks would be a positive act. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Point of personal privilege, point of information, where are we? What are we speaking against? We are, the item of <coughs> is the amendment to E.4 to strike 20 June and insert 1st of June. And we are on a speech against said amendment. Thank you. Rick Walter, you have six months is a nice round amount of time. Having different numbers in different places is confusing people. Also, there's been much grief and much uh, complaints in the past about uh, conflicts with schools. Many schools do not get out until later in June uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, and I think this is a bad idea. Okay, that was a speech against the amendment. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kate Seacliff, she her. Since the current constitutional doesn't require anything, you can have your convention in February if that's what you decided you wanted to do. I am not necessarily convinced that expanding at their available <coughs> range of choices, like that's their choice to make. If they say, we want to do the convention during school, that's their choice to make. I'm not sure it's our job to make that choice for them. That was a speech in favor of the amendment. How much time are we remaining against? 15 seconds. Yes, that was a speech in favor. There are 15 seconds remaining against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Mr. Chair, with then he, him, I would just like to point out the fact that the number of uncontested years means that in a lot of cases, we're getting whatever the committee brings down and telling people to bid if they don't like when the dates are is not really a reasonable demand of people. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Okay. Yeah, two seconds. Okay. So time against the amendment has fully elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Thirty-four seconds remain in favor. A lot of when to conventions are held depends on the price rates we can get for hotels. If the price for your room is 100 versus 150, do you want your convention the month that it's 100 or 150? Therefore, we leave people free to choose. I'm unclear if that was debate on the amendment or the underlying motion, but I'm sorry, I can make Yeah, but it's done. Okay. Is there any time remaining in favor? 16 seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment to strike 20 June and insert 1st June, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay. I'm going to ask, put your hands down. I'm going to do another 
hand vote before I decide we need to do a serpentine. Those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against. I'm going to say the motion fails. Okay, and so the amendment fails, and what is before us is E.4, no longer not amended as it was originally presented. Um, time has elapsed, however, we, we yes. No, we don't need to suspend the rules because we have not had substantive debate on the underlying motion, <laughs> and so the uh, our standing rules say that they there shall automatically be two minutes for each side. I'm going to, um, if, if there are no objections, I'm going to say one minute for each side since we originally set it at two total minutes. Hearing no objection, there is one minute of time allotted for each side. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.4? Kevin Stanley, he, him, Mitch Chair. Sadly, we have actually seen at least hypothetical cases where Worldcons were obliged to postpone their events from their originally scheduled dates by substantial amounts in some cases. And the question came up, what if they had planned their convention for August or September and find themselves so constrained that they can't hold their convention until the following February? Is that illegal? It isn't clear. But it certainly would have collided with a bunch of other pro issues that the other Worldcon after them would have. Those of us proposing this, I believe, think uh, that this is we need to set a little bit of bonkers on this. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Well, I understand this may be intended to address postponements. As written, it does not do that. If I bid a convention to be held in October of the year, I could not consult with my successor about that uh, time period being after September 30th because my successor would not exist at the time my bid was selected. That was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Perry and Lurie Schieffer, this does not allow for force majeure problems. Instead, you would have to bump the Worldcon to a different committee when that might not be necessary. If this con had had to have their convention on December 23rd, that would not have been allowable. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? How much time is remaining? We have 14 seconds in favor. 14 seconds remains in favor. But done he him. Unless the mediation is authorized under section 2.6, they would have just had to ask Chicago for permission, which I think is a reasonable burden to put on them. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? How much time do you have in favor? Uh, in favor, seven seconds. I'm going to consider that to be time elapsed unless there's an objection. Okay. Time in favor has elapsed, and I. Don't, there was nobody wishing to speak but again, so we will move to a vote. So this is on the ratification of E.4. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Okay, thank you. All those against? Okay. And the motion passes and E.4 is adopted. We're looking at 2.6. It's 11.52, our break is not until 12.15, so we are going to move on to E.5, Bid Committee Contactability, found on page 24 of your agenda. I am suggesting a debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. 
All those in favor of ratification of E.5, Mid Committee Contactability, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? The motion passes. Once we roll the one minute, we're going to keep moving. Wait, E.6, ballot completeness is found on page 25. I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion? This uh, adds us the option of putting a postal app, uh, a uh, email app, uh, sorry, phone number space on the ballot, which I wasn't provided for before and wasn't prohibited, just a suggestion of the words there, and just simply puts in writing what has always been the expectation that the uh, address uh, to be given on the ballot is the postal address. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Him. I think we're getting into risk of unintended consequences. You're potentially disenfranchising uh, uh, future people, people who may actually be homeless, and this is trying to deal with a problem that perhaps was not a problem. <coughs> I will remind the body to please stay in order. That was the speech again. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? John Pomerantz, if you can. Uh, I appreciate the member's point. I was very concerned upon first reading that unhoused people might be excluded by this. I'm satisfied that the benefits to be gained by this are greater than that potential loss, particularly given that they will have their votes counted as no preference and therefore get the benefit of the subsequent WISPIS membership. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Please define for me every possible format of postal address that you might accept and whether or not you feel confident in your ability to validate whether that is a valid postal address. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? You please use a short mic. It is no. People can use what mic they want. Linda Robinette, she, her. I have worked with the Register of Voters in the past, and there are many, many ways of being able to have a proper address, or you can vote in your proper precinct, this is where we're in California, and vote and be homeless. So I don't feel that the um, lack of a permanent address is necessarily uh, uh, disregarding homeless people. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? The person next to you, I am sorry. Dave Hook, he him. Um, one thing I've observed in the United States is that there are substantial numbers of not homeless, but people on reservations where they actually do not have postal addresses. And they do vote, but it is really, in many areas, it's very problematic about the fact that there is no postal address. And so when I see this on this thing, even though I understand what's being proposed, I am worried about that. Yeah, can you please bring your back to the secretary? One moment. Oh, uh, we have 153 remaining for and 213 remaining against. Okay, that was a speech in favor, right? It was against, sorry. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Joni Grill Dashoff. I administered two site selections, and it is very hard to do the pre-certification without a postal address. 
to confirm that it is a human who voted, since the reservations have ways to get you to vote in the United States elections, whatever procedure they use, we can also adopt. But truly, you've been asked by the computers lots of times to prove you're a human. I would strongly recommend we specify both postal and electronic. I know it's cheaper to contact by electronic, but first, please, can I have a postal address so I know you're real? Are we wanting to make privileged motions? Okay, then it's not time to raise your hand. Yep. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speech to speak against? Uh, sorry, pink mask. Is, are you wanting to make a privileged motion? No. Okay. Um, Ray Pritchard, he, him. Uh, with respect to the previous speaker, I think we're falling a little into American exceptionalism, and I would like to restate uh, Kate Seaport's point. There are a vast number of countries in this world with a vast number of systems of postal addresses or ways of recording where you live, and to be honest, I doubt there is any site selector administrator out there who could look at a ballot from somewhere in the world and go, yes, this is a valid postal address or not. I was speech against. I wish you to make a privileged motion. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? <coughs> I, are you? Okay, then I will recognize you. Sorry. Once you started bouncing, I could tell. Uh, Lisa Hayes, she, her. I want to make it clear that if you're on the bid or trying to run a world con, it's a legal entity, you have to be able to be sued. So you have to have an address to sue from. Now it could be a lawyer's address, it could be your friend's address, it could be anything, but something has to be there. I'm going to remind the body that there's only one presiding officer in the room and that it is not your job to enforce debate and that when a member is wrapping up their speech and walking away from the microphone, it does not save us time to yell at them about whether or not it was the correct kind of debate to have. So, I will however rule that that was not a speech about this motion. And so, I believe I had asked for a speech in favor, right? Okay, is there any wish you to speak in favor? Okay. In the Hawaiian mask, tie-dye mask, fun colors mask, I'd like to slightly to him. Nothing in this text requires validation. Look at the address is not omitted. I was speaking in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yeah, you, sorry. Chris Hensley, he, him. The fact is that Postal addresses are not actually a useful way for validating that someone is a valid human being. My first job was in working with computers was scraping public databases of addresses. Those things can be bought cheaply and they are valid addresses. And so even if we had the capability to validate the legitimacy of the address, that does not mean that there's a real person there. It is not, it is not sufficient for the purpose that they claim it is being used for. Thank you. As a speech against, how are we doing on time? We have 59 seconds remaining for and a minute 10 seconds remaining against. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? The people speaking against this motion have made some very valid points that will try quickly to address some of them. <laughs> you are correct. It is possible to fictitiously post an address that you found somewhere else. Having an address makes it easier for someone who cares to and has the access to that information to follow up and say, did you actually vote? It is also true that postal addresses in different cultures are wildly variable and that One no moment, one I'm gonna interrupt the speaker, I'm sorry. You already spoke on this item, didn't you? I did, yeah. You did, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have recognized you and my apologies. Okay. 
is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Kevin, Stan Kevin Stanley, he, him. Mr. <coughs> Chair, during World War II and sometime thereafter, there were, I believe, thousands, if not multiple hundreds of people, all with the same address. It was a post office box in Albuquerque. That was a postal address. Postal address does not say physical address. All of those people were at Los Alamos National Laboratories. They were not allowed That's to right. have an address. But they could all have postal addresses. And the Sears Roebuck Company were wondering, why were they sending so many catalogs to Albuquerque? <laughs> Time. Time in favor. Um, has elapsed. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Have you all raised your hand on this one? Okay, cool. I didn't think that. Andrew Adams, he, him. I move to divide the question between what was represented by the maker as the um, editorial motion to add may include telephone address and the rest of the question so that we may um, consider these two elements which I believe are distinct. Um, distinct. One moment. First question should be to add and may include a telephone number space and the rest of the amendments to be a separate question. Okay. Um, so it's my ruling that this would be allowed because either of these changes on their own would be a lesser change. Um, is there a second? Okay, it has been seconded. So the item it has been moved and seconded to divide the question to well, let me restate the motion first. It has been moved and seconded to divide the question so that the first portion is the addition of and may include a telephone, numbers, a telephone number space. And then the second question would be the other changes contained in E.6. What is your question? Would it be in order to suggest a different division? Yes, the motion to, well, it would be in order to amend. The motion to divide is amendable. That would be in order. Okay. Yeah. Oh, come on, people. But then he, him, us, uh, if, if we were to divide this and uh, the result were to be the only past one, would that not count as an amendment in the second year and thus need two thirds? I, I mean, I'm going to say it's going to take a two-thirds vote to divide the question because it's essentially functioning as an amendment. Because that seems reasonable. Okay. Ron has a question. I recognize Ron. Inquiry to the proposer, uh, the, are you planning, there are additions highlighted in blue prior to the text you are asking to be included in the first part? Are you intending those to be included in the first part of the divided question or the second part? Uh, it involves email address and telephone number. That's a question for the chair, and sorry. Apologies, Mr. Chair. Uh, as I stated it, and the member didn't tell me that I was wrong, the first question would be solely the addition of and may include a telephone number space. And the second question would be all other changes in E.6, both those in the first sentence before telephones and those after. Uh, Parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Email. Um, so this is basically splitting the ratification in two, and we can ratify one vote or neither. And if they're both ratified, they will be recombined at the discretion of the secretary in probably this exact form. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 
I would highly recommend the secretary to recombine it in this exact form. <laughs> um, were there any other questions? I know this is weird. Yes. Yes. You're looking at E.5, not E.6. We are on E.6. Thank you. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That looks correct, and I believe we have, so we now have the division up on a slide. Okay. Great. So this is going to be a motion. This is uh, going to require a two thirds vote. All those in favor of division, are you wishing to make a motion? Okay. I wish to propose a different division of the second order amendment. Okay, so no, this is, it's not a second order amendment because it's a division, not an amendment. What of, what other division are you proposing? Uh, instead of the one that is there, I would propose to include in the top part the uh, postal and email address, and just the bottom part is the balance of any Okay, so the alternate division being proposed would be that the first question would be the addition of postal address, email address, and may include a telephone number space. And the second question would be the addition of a sentence that begins valid emitting name, etc. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It, yes. I you need to put the mic, I cannot hear you. Apologies, Mr. Chairperson. I believe that the post second division is in the coin that it was made reference to postal address that would not be added if postal address is added by the first one. I'll take that point. Yes, that point of order is well taken. Yes. Such a division would be entangled and would not be in order. Thank you. Okay, so the amendment to the division was ruled out of order, and so we are back to the original division. Is there uh, one moment? Are you wishing to debate or to amend, or to something else? Amend. Okay. Please come forward and take your amendment. The question to divide is not debatable. That's why I asked. Dr. Frankel, to him, uh, I move to suspend the rules um, and uh, divide the question in nearly the same manner as the previous speaker, except that. Um, uh, uh, that postal address is duplicated across both uh, divisions. Sorry. 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 So, th that, that is not, we can't suspend the rule. The rule preventing you from dividing a question that is entangled is one of sense making and not dividing a question in such a way that you could pass one part and like it ends it, then it wouldn't make sense. So I'm gonna rule that that can't be suspended because that would be entirely unfair to the secretarial team and to the body and to the society. So that cannot be suspended. I, um, the, um, the rule of the chair. Oh. Okay, you've appealed the ruling of the chair. I am going to rule that this is a decision that is unappealable as it is something that there cannot be two reasonable opinions about. It is not possible to divide a question in a way where one part of the question is dependent upon, it, on, upon the second part of a question that is that leads to nonsense and that, therefore that decision is not appealable. I appeal the role of the chair. <laughs> you, cannot, you, you cannot chain appeals that way. I have ruled 
that it is not appealable. Do you wish I believe that the chair is incorrect about the facts of the matter? I, I understand that you believe that the chair is incorrect about the facts of the matter, and the chair has said that you are not. Do you wish to vote to remove the chair? Job. Okay, so we are currently on the question of the division. Is there right one? Do you have an amendment? I'm not sure anymore. Uh, what I was trying to do was separate out the you have to vote it as no preference from the what goes on the ballot form. Right. So I'm not sure how to do that. Okay, I understand what you are trying to do. However, what is before us is E.6 as passed at Chengdu. We are not. Our, our system is that we ratify changes that were passed at the previous convention and that we can, or not, and that there are certain kinds of changes that we can make to those. If you wish to make a substantive amendment that would be a greater change, then we can do that, and then it would be passed on for ratification at Seattle, and this would count as its first, as its first passage. But just because we want to be able to do a thing to a ratification does not mean it is possible to do that thing. So I guess my question is Perry and Lori Sheeva, I guess my question is, would it be in order to strike out the ballot containing name, signature, and postal address may only be counted as no preference, which would be a lesser change, correct? Yeah, it would be in order to amend to strike that sentence, correct. The, the problem with division was that you were not striking, it would be possible to adopt that and not the other part. So is it in order to make the motion to strike that now? Not while we're on the division. Okay. Uh, point of personal uh, privilege, the header is wrong? Yes, and no. <laughs> <laughs> the parliamentarian will work on fixing that. Uh, yes. So under Can my you, division. Uh, yes. Please come to the mic. Oh. 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 Are we okay? Uh, probably. Oh. Those skirts are really dangerous. <laughs> They're not attached to this. Okay. Um, under my proposed division, um, you would have two um, uh, 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 two amendments that were both complete and on themselves. One of them would add postal address and um, um, and um, then create the dependent clause of ballot submitting name, signature, and postal address, and only count as no preference. Um, one would also add postal address and add a bunch of other stuff. How is that creating a headache for the chair and making um, and creating um, an unentangled? Everybody to object? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand. I. Yeah, it's a point of order because I've already ruled on this. Correct. I'm going to just, this is going to be the last thing I say about this. Under such a division, you could have a sentence saying that if you omit the postal address, the ballot will only be considered no preference, but we may not have passed the change requiring that there be a space for the postal address. And it is not sensical to say that we can do, that if a ballot doesn't include certain things, it's no preference if we have not instructed that the ballot be required to include those things. Okay, the question before us is the division. What purpose does the member write? Come on, people. Okay, the question has been called on the division. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item before us is the division of E.6 into two questions. The first question would be the addition of and may include a telephone number space. The second question would be all other changes to E.6 that are, yeah, all other changes within E.6, both the postal address and email address section and the ballot omitting sentence. Are we clear on what is before us? Okay, all those in favor of the division, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against, thank you. The division fails. We are going to take our lunch break and come back and take up, well, let me, let me ask this first. Is there anybody still wishing to speak on E.6? Yes, we are going to go to the lunch break and when we come back, we will take up E.6.
We will be back here at 1 p.m. Um, and hopefully I will have a deputy presiding officer and the results of the MDC election fairly soon. Um, okay, previously on the business meeting, for those that don't remember, um, we were on E.6. Also, because my brain isn't next to me right now, don't let me forget, after we handle E.6, I need to say some things about committees. Um, so, we were on E.6. There was a motion to divide, which failed, and so we are back to E.6 as originally, as it printed in the agenda. We have not had substantive debate on, or, no, the division was like the, at the end of quite a bit of substantive debate, actually, so never mind. Uh, we, have, we have had substantive debate, and all time for debate has left. Um, I believe there is a person wishing to make an amendment, and so I will recognize Kate. Hi. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <coughs> KC Court, she her mixed chair. I move to amend the proposal by removing the words or postal address and changing the comma between name and signature to the word or. Did you want to also add the word either before name? Uh, yeah, sure, if that's clearer for people. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. The Amendment is to change the sentence that says ballot submitting name, signature, or postal address may only be counted as no preference to read ballot submitting either name or signature may only be counted as no preference. Are we clear on what the amendment is? Okay. This is, are we, okay, I think we're clear. Okay, this is not debatable because time for debate has expired. Is there anyone needing to make a privileged motion? Oh, right, a two-thirds vote. You're right. Sorry. Does it should it happen before or after we take the two-thirds vote to consider it? I think it makes a difference. You're going to ask me if it's a lesser change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Kevin Stanley has asked me if it's a lesser change. So. Not greater change. Okay, so. Okay, my ruling is that this is not a greater change because it does not bring us further away from the Constitution than the original amendment does, or the original E.6 does. Okay. Um, because this is a uh, amendment to a new constitutional change up for ratification that was not submitted ahead of time, it does require a two-thirds vote for the body to decide to consider it. All those in, fav in favor of considering this amendment, this is not a vote on whether you want to pass the amendment, merely whether you want to consider it. All those in favor of considering the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? That was not two-thirds in favor, and so the amendment is not going to be considered. We are back to E.6, as in the agenda. Time for debate has expired. Okay, so we are going to move to a vote. Okay. Okay, is there anyone wishing to do anything? Seeing none, we're going to move to a vote, and we don't need to call the question. So, all those in favor of E.6, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And the motion passes and E.6 is adopted. Um, yes? Oh. I'm aware of that. I tried to control the people. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to take a brief standing pause. Okay, is the body okay with me giving the instructions on indicating interest in committee? 
without captioning the words ironic ass back. Okay, I'm going to state this now and then I'll restate it later with, when we have captioning. How about that? Okay. So, anyone interested in the F.13 committee, that's the location committee, um, I've had a few folks express interest. Uh, please um, get a piece of paper, put your name and your email address on it, and put the word F.13 on it. Um, and come and give it to me at a break. Don't feel the need to chat with me, just give me the piece of paper. Um, for the other committees that we've created, like the QA Process Study Committee and the Business Meeting Committee, please email uh, businessmeeting at glasgow2024.org and we will get your interest passed along to the chairs of those committees. The address is business meeting with or without a hyphen, at glasgow2024.org. Yes? Where might you find some spare paper? Where might you find some spare paper? Uh, Perry Ann has some, apparently. And the hotel has some. And we, we have paper up here. If you need the paper, you can come up here at the break and grab the paper to then fill it out. If you did not get the email address verbally, the slide I the ignore the rest of the slide, but the slide I have has the email address on it. So, Ron, what is the situation with the captioning? Well, we are troubleshooting. Apologies for the inconvenience and clearly and not speak too quickly when you speak so that members who have difficulties hearing or processing are able to follow and hopefully we will have the captioning again soon. Do we have a result for the Merck Protection Committee elections? We do have a result. The first seat went to Donald Eastlake the second to Linda Dinneroff, and the third to Olaf Rockney. Okay, so to be clear, if you're interested in being on the F.13 committee, bring that up to the head table at a break, not while we're in session. <laughs> Is there any objection to thanking the tellers and ordering them to destroy the ballots? Seeing none, it is so thanked and ordered. Uh, the right yeah. Yes. Will the preferential ballot total in the round be published? Yes. The vote totals will be published in the minutes. The breakdown of voting will be published in the minutes, correct. Um, that's not what I was ordering to be destroyed, it was the actual ballots. Okay, the tellers are thanked and the ballots are ordered to be destroyed. Okay, so we are now moving to E.7, independent films. Before we get started, is there any objection to the body of the chair reminding you all or informing you all of the results of the consultative vote that was uh, that was conducted? Okay, hearing none, I will do so. I didn't want you feel, you all to feel that I was 
unfairly uh, preferencing anything. So there was a consultative vote of the membership conducted online uh, prior to the convention. There were uh, 1,260 total votes with 42.3% um, in favor and 52.7% against. 42.3% in favor, 57.7% against. I don't have the exact number of votes, but you can pull out a calculator and do the math if you would like to. Okay, I'm going to suggest a total debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I will once again remind the body that there is only one presiding officer in this room. It has been moved and seconded to postpone the ratification of this item indefinitely. It is my ruling that ratifications are special orders and therefore cannot be postponed indefinitely. However, if the body would wish to suspend the rules to do so, that would be in order. Do you wish? Second. Well, am I correct in saying an objection to consideration at this point is also out of order? An objection to consideration would be out of order, and I don't think I would allow that to be suspended. Then I move to suspend the rules to allow it. Okay, so the motion to suspend? Parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Would a motion, would a vote to suspend the rules require a greater percentage of this body that a vote simply defeat the motion once it came before us? Correct. I, I will restate. The question is, does a vote to suspend the rules require a greater majority than, do, than a vote to simply defeat the ratification on its face? And that is correct. The motion to suspend the rules has been moved and seconded. Okay. And to be clear, the motion to suspend the rules is a two-thirds vote, but is neither debatable nor amendable. We opponent it definitely, while also a two-thirds vote is debatable. So we are only voting on the motion to suspend the rules so that we can then make a motion to postpone indefinitely. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow us to postpone, to move to postpone E.7 indefinitely, all those in favor of suspending the rules, raise a hand. Thank you, those against. And the motion does not pass and the rules are not suspended. The item before us is E.7 with four minutes of debate time. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Barclay. Chris Barclay, he, him. I know a little thing about best dramatic presentation. <laughs> I agree that it needs reform, but this is not it. Independent films need to scruff along against major studios like everybody else. This isn't needed. We don't need this. Thank you. Thank you. That was a speech again. I will note that the captioning is bad. Just FYI. Um, is there any wishing to speak in favor? Uh, all the question. Okay, there has not been a speech in favor. I'm going to, okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, is there anyone else wishing to speak in, speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Given that there are no motions in favor, there are no speeches in favor, I'm gonna ask again, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, since there is, is it two total minutes or two minutes? No. So there's currently less than two minutes, so it would require suspension of the rules. I'm going to... Two total? Okay, okay here's the thing. I'm, we have some procedural stuff we have to figure out. I'm going to recognize the speech against while we do that, because that will not take any more time. Who wants to speak against? Okay, I'm going to recognize... 
Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I just want to say this shouldn't just be defeated. It needs to be defeated with prejudice because the Hugos are not equipped to handle items that are not widely available. A vast majority of our membership and the voting public are unable to see these items during the eligibility period. Also, there is a definitional problem where movies that should not be considered for an independent Hugo Award could definitely be considered for one. The, the uh, last year's winner, Everything Everywhere All at Once, is by an independent studio. I, the uh, Avatar 2, Way of the Water, was by IAC Films, which is classed as an independent. There is no definition that excludes those that allows us to celebrate the smaller things like Molly and Max in the future, which I proposed a extension of eligibility, because it's a great movie and I want people to see independent films. I believe independent films should be celebrated. This is not the way to do it. Thank you, that was a speech against. Is there anybody still wishing to speak on this matter on either side? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of E.7 independent films, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. The motion is not adopted. The next item before us is now E.8, eligibility criteria for non-English work on page 25. I am suggesting a debate time of Two total minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of E.A, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you. And the motion passes. E.A is adopted. Brings us to E.9, Best Fan Cast Not Paying Compensation, on page 26 of your agenda. I'm suggesting a total debate time of four minutes for this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? No? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, the person in the green. <coughs> to the secretary before you begin speaking. Kelsey Shapira, she, her. For context, I'm a booktuber on my own YouTube channel as well as a co-host of a monthly live stream project. I also nominate in this category every year. This change to the rules makes no sense to me, either as a content creator or a nominating voter. Content creation in audio and video formats can be both monetarily costly and time consuming, and it is par for the course for creators to attempt to defray some of these costs through some form of monetization, be it Patreon, the YouTube Partner Program, or what have you. Most are not turning a profit at this. If this amendment is meant only to disqualify fan casts taking in money over a certain amount, it needs to specify that. If it's not meant to apply to fan casts monetized through the platform on which they're published, such as YouTube or TikTok, then it needs to be more clear on this point. I want to point out that on YouTube, the platform with which I'm most familiar, whether or not a channel is monetized is not public information. If this rule change goes into effect as written, I can imagine that the average nominator would be at sea as to whether anything is eligible in this category at all. Thank you. That was a speech again, and the time you're spending clapping is eating into the additional time. Is there any? I'm sorry. Um, Privilege. Um, I would like to move to suspend the rules so that I can put through a motion to postpone indefinitely. No. 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 All right, then I would like to speak again to this motion. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Inquiry, I think. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Uh, this is clearly about the fact that, according to the previous agenda. Yeah, this is long enough. Can you come to the mic? Sorry. 
uh, Ray Richard, he, him. I, I do just want to check. According to the copy of the Worcester's Constitution currently available on the Worcester's website, Professor Tran cast is 3.3.16, and this has been listed in the agenda as an amendment 3.3.15. We will, so our rule also say that if there's issues with numbering, the secretary corrects it. Okay, we'll assume that it's amending the section that's about man cast. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, point of order. Yes. Did nobody move? There was a member who said a thing and then withdrew it. I thought you recognized I mean, I, I recognized them, but then they immediately withdrew their motion. Well, everyone yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true, and I will apologize to the member because I will, I did forget to remind the body when you did all yell at the member that y'all aren't the presiding officer. Um, I didn't mean for this to become my catchphrase, but it has become so. <laughs> So I do apologize to the member for the behavior of the body. Um, I think we're still looking for a speech in favor. Do you wish to speak in favor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Brungle, he, him. So I appreciate the concerns of the previous speaker, but um, this does specify a strong and obvious distinction. It does not say if you take in any money, um, you can't qualify as fan cast. It says if you pay people, which is to say if you take profits. Okay, you, once again, please don't try and correct the member on their debate. That's not in order. Okay, uh, that was speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? We'll recognize the person in the blue. Uh, Claire Russo, she, her, I am a two-time best fan cast finalist. Um, and I would like to point out that I, I don't think the wording is clear. I also think the fact that the phrase non-professional is already included me the amendment redundant. Um, pay its contributor or staffs monetarily. Um, I'm not a big operation. Under UK tax law, I do a thing called salary sacrificing, which means that I pay every cost out of my personal account and I receive every money into my personal account. I literally don't know if I've made a profit and I would very much like the body to not make me look into how much money it is costing me to do this. I'm <laughs> like, thank you. Uh, Claire, Claire, Claire. Uh, yes. Um, okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, the white. Person, I'm Kendall Boland, he, him. Uh, I just want to point, point. I just want to point out that a lot of people are throwing around terms that are not in this amendment. It doesn't say make a profit. It says paying contributors of staff, which at least to me does not is not the same thing as you make a profit. So I'm in favor. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? I will recognize uh, the person in the well, You're all in black and white shirts. The middle of the three of you. Um, how much time is remaining? Uh, nine seconds. Okay. So, uh, that first. Uh, Mr. Chair, does this mean that? Sorry. Uh, Mr. Chair, does would this mean that the Hugo Committee has to audit the books for all of these, in order to determine whether they paid people and how much? I'm taking that as a rhetorical question in debate. Okay, time against the amendment has elapsed, or the 
ratification has elapsed. Is there anyone she can speak in favor? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.9, best fan cast not paying compensation, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And if they all, it is not adopted. Okay, the next item before us is E.10, language requirement, also on page 26. I am suggesting a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, the debate time is set at two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm sorry, parliamentary inquiry? Okay. Could the chair rule on the... Please come to the microphone. Uh, Dash off he him. Could the chair clarify, first of all, whether in the second sentence in the middle of the uh, word, to be, the words to be added, does and is, does that and equal and or? And if it doesn't, if it was or instead, would that be a greater or lesser change? I can I can conceive of a time when the current committee speaks one language, the previous committee speaks the second language, but the book has already come out in the language of the preceding committee. So does it have to satisfy both or either? meeting at Chengdu uh, and the language that is currently before us as written in both the agenda and presented to us uh, in, uh, well, not on the screen yet, 
um, is subject to interpretation, but not by the chair of the WISPIS business meeting, but by any future Hugo administration, should this body decide to ratify the amendment. Yeah, you're correct. Thank you. Yeah, I don't get to decide what qualifies for Hugo Awards. Thank God. Um, <laughs> that's other people's jobs. Um, thank you for helping me get out of that spiral. Um, so that's my ruling. I know it doesn't. No, I know it doesn't answer the second question. So maybe No, I. My my ruling is that if I am unsure if the change would change the meaning, then it is a greater change. So it would be a greater change. Okay. What is before us is E.10, which I set a debate time of two minutes, right? Okay. Is there anyone wishing? We haven't had any speeches, right? Corey. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, motion to call the question. Okay. So I'm going to remind the body that because of our rules, when you call the question before there's been any debate, it requires us to suspend the rules and then call the question and takes up a lot of time. And I've only set two minutes of debate time for this. Does the member still wish to make the motion? Withdrawn. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? The motion was withdrawn. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Walcott, can you bring the mic? Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Lou Walcott, uh, he, him. Uh, I'd like to give a specific example regarding 3.4.2. Works originally published outside Scotland or China and, and first published in Scotland and China in the previous calendar year shall also be eligible. Works published outside Scotland and, works published outside Scotland and China shall also be eligible. Uh, I think that if you look at the current slate of Hugo nominees for this year, you'll find that all of them originated outside of one or the other of those countries. Uh, the language problem is equally problematic unless you somehow arrange that at a minimum Ten every seconds. other year you have, a, you have the world count in an Anglophonic country. Okay, that, was, that was a speech against and time against has now elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification E.10 language requirement, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. It fails in the motion, and the change is not ratified. I apologize. Okay. That is going to bring us to E.11, convention generalization. I'm going to recommend a debate time of two minutes. Is there any objection? Board to order. Yes. Um, I would like to move for a suspension of the rules and reverse the order of consideration of uh, 11 and 12, since if we vote down okay, 12, 11 becomes moved. Okay, so the second part was a speech, and we're going to, that's irrelevant. You have moved to um, take up something out of order to take up E.12 before E.11. This requires a two-thirds vote. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion is not before us, and we'll move to E.11. Um, I believe I, yeah, you didn't object to two minutes, so that's where we are. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of E.11? Not only is Lake I believe this motion was originally proposed by the nitpicking and fly stacking committee of which I chair, and it really just generalizes things. It means that no further changes uh, in these areas are necessary should we decide at some point to add an, as an aspect or to delete the aspect or both or something else like that. It just makes things general and, and less wordy. So certain people who have complained in previous speeches about increasing in wordage <laughs> should favor this amendment. <laughs> That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak, speak against? Okay. I am 
political names with the term selected committees. Um, what convention, conventions, et cetera, et cetera. Because it says nothing about um, what conventions are selected and by whom and all of that. I think it is much too indefinite. Okay, that was a speech against. How much time do we have for bringing in paper? 30 seconds. Three or 30? 30. 30, okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I think it should be fundamentally obvious that if we are talking about a document of the World Science Fiction Society and we talk about selected conventions, we are talking about conventions selected by a Worcester sanctioned convention, whether it be a Worldcon or a NASFIC or any other convention that we may tend to add. And therefore, Ten seconds. Therefore, I don't see any problem. And yes, I was trying to run out the clock. Thank you. <laughs> that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak again? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of ratification of E.11 convention generalization, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? It passes and, it, and E.11 is ratified. That brings us to E.12, establishment of ASPIC on page 27. I'm going to set a total, or sorry, recommend rather, a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Are you objecting? I move we postpone it definitely, but I will wait if that's not Well, I. Well, hold, oh, once again, y'all, one presiding officer, it's me. I know what the member's doing, so I'm good. Is there any objection to four total minutes of debate time? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. I will now recommend, Ms. recommend, recognize <laughs> that, the member. I, I take it off. <laughs> I, do proper. I move to postpone indefinitely. And suspend the rules in order to do so. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, mixed chairperson. Thank you. Um, it has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules in order to allow us to take up whether or not to postpone it definitely E.12. Motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable and requires a two-thirds vote. As a reminder, this is just about whether or not we will then take the vote on postponing indefinitely. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? I do not believe that was a two-thirds majority, and so the suspension of the rule does not pass. We are back to E.12 before us with a total. Please, I have troubles when the front row is talking loud enough for me to hear them. Um, what is before us is E.12 with a total debate time of four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm uh, somewhat ambivalent, actually, I guess, but I think it would be a very interesting experiment. It does have an automatic expiration clause, so that if we do uh, ratify this, it's not like it's going to stick around. It's going to, it will be, I think, at most, would be at most uh, four mass fix before they would automatically go away. We can see what happens. I don't really have any idea what will happen. Uh, the first time there might be one would be 2027. And it does happen that there is an Asian bid for 2027, because Israel is inside Asia as defined by this uh, motion. So I, I just think people should uh, consider whether this would be an interesting experiment uh, that we should adopt in its current form, which includes the Sunset Clause. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? and Marie Sheher, I think the NASPIC was a bad idea, and the ASPIC is an even worse idea. There is not any evidence whatsoever that there is any group outside of Chengdu that wants to host ASPICs. And just because it might be interesting to see what happens isn't a good reason to add it to the Constitution. And that was a speech against. How much time is remaining in favor? We have one minute and 14 seconds in favor. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor?
Secretary Bart, he, him. I would like to move to amend the language to be consistent with E3 as passed. Okay, so the motion is to, so E3 is the consistent change that changes a whole bunch of supporting to witnesses. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say that. I'm going to remind everyone again, it's my job to make rulings. Um, I'm going to consider that to be an editorial revision, um, especially considering that we have adopted E3, and so the should E12 be adopted, um, it would be edited to reflect the consistent change in E3. Okay, is there anyone, I'm on favor still, right? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I move the previous question. Second. Okay, the previous question has been moved and seconded. I believe we still have, we have over one total minute of debate time remaining, right? Okay, so it is in order. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Okay, I do see people still wishing to speak, so we will move to a vote. All those in favor of calling the question and ending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. And the motion passes and um, debate has been ended. We'll move to a vote on the adoption of E.12. All those in favor of ratifying E.12 establishment of the aspect, please raise the hand. I, I do still, I need to continue with the vote, so thank you. Thank you. That was Gertrude Bell, thanks. Okay, all those opposed, please raise the hand. Thank you, and the motion has failed, and E.12 is not adopted. Yep. We're gonna stop for 10 minutes, actually. Um, we are close to our bio break time, and it seems like the break between the E's and the F's is a good place to take a break. So, we will reconvene at 1.57. Order. I need all conversations with the seats and members to take their seats. Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to move to the F's. Yay. Our new constitutional changes. So we are starting with F1. So, as a reminder, for the standing rule change that we enacted way back on Friday. For the items that have come up in the first pass, they've come up during a main business meeting, and so a motion to postpone indefinitely would not be in order. Once we get to F14, such motions would be in order. However, I will remind the body that by our standing rules, the motion to postpone indefinitely is automatically by default assigned four minutes of debate time, and it requires a two-thirds vote. I would remind the body to think about the debate times that I've been proposing, and use that to consider whether or not a motion to postpone indefinitely will actually accomplish what you wish. Okay. We are going to move to F.1, which is on a page 28. F.1, missing in action. I am recommending a total debate time of two minutes to this. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, we have time to set at two minutes. Um, would one of the makers of the motion like to speak to it? Warren, take notes. Because our secretary is going to speak. This amendment came up because as uh, Lindsay Denneroff, she, her, as we were working on the um, conversion of voters to the database for Seattle in 2025, we noted that there were guest of memberships or people had purchased two memberships intending to give one to someone else. I'm talking about listless memberships. And since there was, there was no reason not to change these memberships or give refunds when there was a mistake, um, we went ahead and on a case-by-case -case basis did so. This amendment simply says that until such time as a vote is taking place, whether it's site selection or Hugo uh, voting or nominations, that, that these changes can be made. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Harry and 
Corey Sheever. I just have a question. It says that if the member dies, the membership is transferred to the estate of the deceased. I just want you to answer me whether or not the estate of the deceased is considered a natural person or not. So that question is directed at me. The estate is not a natural person because it's not a person. Well, it's a legal person. It's not a people person. It's not a natural person. Okay, so no, an estate would not be a natural person. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Joshua Grundle, T. Hem. I move to strike the word accidental, accidentally, in this motion. Because we're not meeting my purpose. Second. Can you write where you're calling? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded to strike the word accidentally. So that point A would read, when a person purchases a WISPIS membership for someone without providing a name or purchases a duplicate membership. It has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to it? I think I've done that. Okay. So the total time remaining is divided between, so it's going to be like a few seconds on each side. Yeah, it's going to be like 30. Do you wish to speak against? I wish to object. Okay. I think it's a great change. Go ahead. I do. Hmm? I think it's a great change. Do you want to speak against? Okay. One presiding officer. Thank you. What is the member's point? I actually am not certain I'm right, so I ask the chair to determine whether or not it is appropriate to take this up, because I'm not sure that we can amend with a greater change at this point, and I think this is one. This is a new constitutional change. Oh, shit. Not a ratification. At this point, they're all greater changes. Okay. I apologize. Is there anybody wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay. Is there anybody else? I'm sorry. Do you wish to speak against? No. Okay. How much time is remaining? If we're not counting that, we have 31 seconds each side. Let's not count that. I wonder if the intent here is to actually to be able to transfer the membership to an actual person. Transferring it to someone's estate does not seem to be. That is not germane. The debate is on the amendment, which is purely about striking the word accidental. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is there anyone wishing? Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Oh, the amendment? Not the amendment. Okay. Seeing no speeches about the amendment, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of striking the word accidentally, raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. And the amendment passes. Can I restate the motion first? Okay. The item now before us is F.1 as amended. So that point A now reads, when a person purchases a WISPIS membership for someone without providing a name or purchases a duplicate membership. That is the item before us is F.1 as amended. What is your question? I withdraw. Okay. Sorry. How much total debate time do we have left? Any? I think it's under 10 seconds. Okay. We're going to say debate time has elapsed. We have had substantive debate on this matter. All those in favor of F.1, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And it passes. I'm not going to say after everyone that these will go on to Seattle for ratification, but it's going to do that. One moment. Okay. One moment. Okay. 
Okay, we are going to move on to F.2, the way we were. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Linda, do you want to speak in favor of it as a proposer, or do you want Kevin to? Okay. Kevin Stanley, he um, mixed chairperson. As I recall, I was one of the co-sponsors of the proposal that turns things the way they are now. I have the right to decide that I made a mistake. I had hoped that it would make things better. I don't think it has. It has confused people in a way that I did not really anticipate. It has made things less clear and harder for people to understand. I think people under, understand the concept of a supporting membership and an attending membership better than they understand this separation of membership types. I think we need to go back to the older terminology, although we can continue to make it not possible to transfer the supporting membership. So that means if you've got an attending membership, uh, you to transfer it, you, the person you're transferring it to would have to also purchase the supporting membership. And I think that would retain. So I, I do believe that's what would happen. Is that not right, Ms. Vinero? Yeah. So I think we made a mistake. I think we've confused more people than we've helped. So let's go ahead and go back to something that works. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, I'm sorry, you need to address the chair, not another member. What is your point of inquiry? Do you, do you have a parliamentary inquiry? No, I have a question on what he said. Okay, so that would be debate. Yes. So I'm going to recognize the person by point first. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to not privilege well. names for some people and not others. You're doing very well. Pixie Clark, she, her. I am somewhat distressed by the tendency of this body to think that our failure and ability to explain things means that we need to change the Constitution. Maybe we need to change how we explain things. There are in infinite numbers of professional societies where you become a member of a society and then you buy a ticket to go to the convention. You're really going to tell me you think Bushwick members are stupider than members of the IEEE? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? I'm going to remind the body to not pop up to speak until I'm ready to ask. Maybe you were good. Until you're ready, until I ask if there are speeches in favor. So the two folks over on the left here that aren't Dr. Adams, did you have a privileged matter? Or were you just wanting to make a speech? I wanted to make a speech. Okay, then I'm gonna recognize you for a speech again. In favor. Linda Robinette, she, her, the Cheng Du people actually did an excellent job of explaining this. And even though I had been going to Worldcon for years, it's the only reason I understood it. I had understood supporting memberships for years, so even though I'd been in and out of these conventions, it confused even a long-term member, and I triple A people are pretty smart. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? In the purple. Alan Fleming, he had an extra person. We just haven't given it enough time to bed in yet. We are we, have, right. we just haven't given this time enough to bed in yet. Uh, supporting and attending memberships were uh, terminology that were understood for a very long period of time. We are making a change. It's in the process of being understood. Every convention that repeats it will make more people understand it. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I recognize the person in the blue, who I believe is one of the proposers. Teal, yellow. <laughs> we have 26 seconds remaining for. I am Kevin Black, he, he, him. I'm on the Seattle team. I can report that 
this has been very difficult both to administer and explain because of the complexity of needing to sell these different memberships and then upgrade between memberships. We still do not have a functioning membership portal one year out after being selected. Ten seconds. And the only way to upgrade or et cetera is to email registration at. It's been an extreme pain point. Please adopt this amendment. Fine. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? We are not more stupid than the IPC. We are a totally different organization than they are. You know, they are very professional, they do all sorts of meetings, they publish papers. We don't do that. The basis, basic reason for membership, supporting membership, is you are supporting the convention. Now, I was entirely in favor of this before. I think we go back to what our people understand, not what professional organizations would understand. It's where us. I believe I want to speak in favor. Yes, we only have one chair. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. I'm sorry. How much time was remaining for speech against? Ten to ten seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to cut it in half and say that there's 30 seconds left. Um, I'll recognize you for speech against. Oh, well, you want me to do 40 seconds? Okay, you know what? It's a minute, whatever. Go ahead. Speech against. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Oh, sorry, what was that? Jason Spitzer, he, him. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, it seems to me that while this is a new system, it seems to protect us, although it may be hard to explain its points, we'll get over that. As people have said, the longer this lasts, we'll figure out how to explain it. Uh, we can figure out and iron out administration points. Um, we are a smart community, and this seems to protect us from issues that arise between different conventions, which cause drastically different amounts of money, um, one of which happened recently with no, no blame. Just this would help to make a separate WISFIS membership, and members in WISFIS could then vote and do other things separate from the attending supplement. So I hope we uh, do not adopt the way we were, but rather stay the way we are now. Thank you. That was the speech against. Is there any time in favor has expired? Is there any? We have 23 seconds. Okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Okay, the person with the awesome hair. <laughs> <laughs> I know awesome hair when I see it. <laughs> Patricia Wayne, they, them. Uh, as someone who's newer to Worldcons and who often explains how these things work to uh, uh, people who are completely new to Worldcons, I can tell you that in my experience, the way we are, it's much easier to explain to outsiders that we would like to become insiders than the way we were. Okay, thank you. That was a speech against. I say the time has expired. So we're gonna move to a vote. All those in favor of FDOT to the way we were, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and I'm going to say that the ayes have it and the motion passes. Okay, I'm going to, according to our senior rules, it does require 10% of the body for a division. I'm going to ask for those who would like a division and a counted vote to raise the hand. That is not 10% of the body, and so we will not do a division, and the motion passes. And it comes up again next year, but I'm not saying that every time. Because we all, will, we may not all know how the new constitutional changes work, but I'll remind us at the end. The, the slide says that these items will pass the 2025 World Cup. Right, the slide, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
That brings us to F.3 required license agreement on page 29. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of two minutes for this. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate is set at two minutes. Would the chair of the MPC or somebody else from the MPC like to speak in favor of it? No, it's like the, um, I know this is fairly self-explanatory. It uh, provides that uh, there can be a, there will be a license agreement, and uh, bidders and uh, their successor, successor operating committees will be required to sign that uh, license agreement. And in order to protect against, you know, unduly severe or onerous agreements or something like that, it requires that this license agreement be approved by the Market Protection Committee, which has representatives of this business meeting, and the most of the members of the FPC represent the business meeting, and also representatives of selected conventions to help advise the NPC in uh, voting numbers. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there any motion to speak against? Mr. Chairperson, my name is Ken Boone, and having been through this and having had to deal with the question of, for example, incorporating uh, a Worldcon after we have re actually been selected, and various other things that happen that can cause the people who would, who would sign the, such an agreement to not be the people who would be bound by it in, during, during the Worldcon, I think this is an attempt to do something that may not be even possible, and if it is possible, I'm not sure that these are the right words. So, um, I suggest we should uh, we, we should put this down and let people work on it more uh, over the next year, and possibly come back with something else. That was a speech again. How much time is remaining in favor? 25 seconds. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the blue. Joshua Prendel, to use him. I've spent far too much time talking to lawyers in the last few months on exactly this subject. And in order to maintain a service mark, you have to do commerce with it. This is a way to make sure that WISPIS is doing commerce with our marks so we can maintain them. That was a speech in favor. How much time is remaining again? Twelve seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak again? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F.3 required license agreement, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. The motion passes and will be passed on. That brings us to F.4, MPC procedures. I'm going to recommend, also on page 29, I'm going to recommend a total debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? That wasn't an objection, right? Cool, okay, so debate time will be set at six minutes and we will give the secretary a moment. I will ask while we do so, if somebody from the NPC, the chair or somebody else would like to speak to it, they can come to the mic to get ready to do that. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Uh, Donald Eastlake, him. Uh, this is to provide uh, your clarity and regularity for the NBC procedures. Uh, for example, uh, NBC has always assumed that a majority was a quorum, which sort of follows the Robert's rules, but this would make that clear when NBC wants to act. Uh, also, there's no current provision whereby some members of the NBC can force there to be a meeting, for example, if the chair doesn't feel like holding one or something like that. This sort of basically adopts normal sort of standard uh, kinds of procedures for that sort of thing in a kind of a minimal form. Uh, currently, there's no specification of the officers of the NPC. This would require that at least have to have a chair, secretary, or treasurer, which is the normal kind of thing. They can have other officers. And uh, it's very common for our treasurer not to act even a voting member, so you can have officers who aren't voting members. So all that's provided for in here. And this last question is the removal of NPC members. So there's two classes of NPC members. Uh, no particular provisions seem to be needed for members who are appointed by World Guns because they can remove and re replace those anytime they want. The question is elected members. 
And the, the view in this is that elected members are elected to represent a particular business meeting, and part of the strength and stability of the MPC comes from the fact that these members are elected from different business meetings held at widely different geographic locations in different years. So, uh, for example, this business meeting, if you're here, you might say, I want to be able to throw all the bums out. Well, you know, do <laughs> you want the people who are elected by this business meeting to be able to be removed by some different business meeting? No, perhaps not. So this provides that removal, which I think should be a very rare and unusual case, is done by a two-thirds vote of the MPC. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I will recognize the person in the urns. Yeah, you, orange mask, yes. Alexis Layton, he, him. I'm concerned that this language uh, seems to indicate that the chair may not be a voting member. I wish to amend, to add, after the, in the second sentence of the addition, officers other than the chair need not be elected by the members. Second. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded. So the um, change would be that in the sentence, which is the um, starts on the first line that's blue, where it says officers need not be elected or appointed, it would say, it would add other than the chair after officers. It would be officers, the insert other than the chair after officers. So it would read officers other than the chair need not be elected or appointed, etc. Has been moved and seconded. What is the total amount of time remaining for debate on this item? Okay, so it's going to be less than five total minutes. Are you going to want to speak to your amendment? Okay. Um, while the timekeeper figures out how much time we're going to have on each side, is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Okay, so 155 to a side. I will recognize in the purple in the back. Chair, uh, Tammy Cox and she, her. Uh, chair is a position that requires a set of skills. We could have a perfectly adequate um, MPC committee, great people who do all sorts of great things and might not have the skills to chair the meeting. Uh, so I think it's important to uh, leave that as an option to have an external chair. Great, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, aside. Yep, yeah, you in the, it also. I agree with Tammy, the previous speaker, that an outside chair is sometimes needed. I don't think this amendment makes that any more or less possible because it says there's a treasurer, an officer, etc., who need not be elected or appointed. At least people free to bring in somebody outside. I believe the speaker's speech is not germane because it's on the text as in the underlying motion, not on the amendment, which changes that sentence. Okay. okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. The amendment doesn't do anything. Okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Richards, he, him. I will confess I may be speaking from a position of ignorance here, and if anyone knows me, that is a very big admission to make. But uh, if the MPC works like every other body I have been ever been on or heard of, the chair has one has one key responsibility which can be delegated, which is to break ties. Therefore, they must 
presumably be an elected appointed member in order to be able to vote to do that. Okay, that was a speech in favor of the amendment. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Were you, okay, in the Paisley? Mixed chairperson, my name is Joni Grill Dashoff. The MPC committee right now has a quandary if this is adopted because our treasurer, who is required to be a member, a resident, excuse me, of California, is an ex officio member because we did not reelect. Okay, I'm gonna respar. I believe the debate is not germane because the amendment is only about making the chair not. No, no. right now you can have ex officio for secretary, chair, and treasurer. If you change it so it's only chair. No, it can the, be the amendment does the opposite. opposite, so the debate is not germane. I'm sorry, but it is true <laughs> that we absolutely have to have. I understand, but the debate is not germane, and so the member is out of order. Anybody else wishing to speak against the amendment? Yes. No, at least thank you, Jim. Uh, our parliamentary inquiry concerns the role of a chair in voting. It's my understanding that a uh, chair can vote whenever it changes the outcome. So, for example, if there's a tie, the chair can break that tie. If there's uh, one down on one side, the chair can vote to create a tie. That a tie means the vote is well, lost. There's no requirement that the uh, chair have to have a vote uh, to be able to, to do that. The, the body always comes to a decision. If there's a tied vote, whatever motion was, was not passed. If the chair can vote, they can break it. If the chair can't vote, then they can't break it. It's still lost. I will say this is less of a parliamentary inquiry because you're not asking me a question, and it's more a speech about the amendment. But do you want to say, is that correct at the end? Yes. <laughs> that is correct. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Against the amendment, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a speech against because it really was, it really was. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, is there anybody else? Do we have time left on against? Okay, so we have about a minute, maybe a little less left against. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Okay. Somewhat to uh, Kevin Stanley, he had a mixed chair, just to, I think, clarify what my colleague said. It is not necessary to have a tie-breaking vote. It doesn't matter whether the chair has a vote in the body. Ties lose. A vote of five to five, there's no prevail, the, 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 the five in favor, five against, there's not a majority in favor. Therefore, you could have a non-member presiding officer who has no vote in the body. You can have an even number of members of your body. You can have an odd number of members. There's no magic involved in this. This is parliamentary law. It's just not what you're used to in your sandlot parliamentary rules. I'm going to rule that last bit out of order. It's a bit degrading. OK. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? back in the blue. How much time do you have left in favor? 10 to 28. Okay. Derek Kamehian, I believe the position of chair is so important that it should be someone who was elected or appointed by a convention committee rather than someone selected by the NPC. They must be responsible to the external body. Okay, that was a speech in favor of the amendment. How much time is remaining against? 16 seconds. Okay, 16 seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none. Did you already speak on the amendment or on the underlying motion? I think I did. I proposed it. Oh, you, did, you were the proposer. I my apologies. Okay. And you didn't speak on it. So if you would like to speak in favor of it, that's in order. Alexis Layton, do you know? Uh, it's perfectly fine for 
committees are supposed to get facilitators who are not members of the committee to help them organize and run things. They don't have to be the chair. I'm saying it's a perfectly reasonable for committees to get facilitators that are not members of the committee if they need more organization during their meetings. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Um, Councilor Lee, you had your hand up. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, which is to, excuse me, add or insert after officers the phrase other than the chair so that it would read officers other than the chair need not be elected or appointed all those in favor of the amendment please raise the hand thank you all those against thank you the motion does not pass and so we are back to f.4 um, as originally submitted where do we have any time for debate left here to vote? I'll give three seconds before I'm getting it. Okay, so probably. Okay, so we have 32 seconds left in favor and a little over two minutes left against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Okay, in the words. They're all wearing black and white, <laughs> so I have to figure out other ways. Cliff Ben Kim, I move to amend by striking from 1.8.x the word elected. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to amend by striking the word elected from section 1.8.x so that it would read Members of the Mark Protection Committee may, may be removed only by a two-third vote of that committee. Um, so we're going to have about doing the math. Oh, we have two minutes and 45 seconds total. total so a minute and 20-ish. Okay. Parliamentary inquiry. Parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Chairperson, if this amendment passes and is taken up and it passes, that means that then... Directing speech to me doesn't mean you have to look at me. Sorry. It's just easier. Um, if this passes and the whole lot, does that mean that convention committee cannot remove a member from that, that committee they originally appointed? Oh. Yeah. Yes, that would be correct. It would mean the only mechanism to remove an appointed member, a member appointed by the convention would be for the Mark Protection Committee to elect to do so. Correct. Okay, do you wish to speak in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, Cliff Dunn, he, him. My reason for moving this is very simple. It is entirely possible to envision a situation where you have a problematic member of the MPC that a convention refuses to remove and you know who, who is genuinely causing problems I believe there may be a current situation where the MPC would have voted to remove somebody if they have the ability to, but they can't. Also, I would point out that it is entirely possible for a, a long-term absentee member problem to arise in either category, and it would behoove Mark MPC to be able to actually push that person out if they're just not showing up for years. I haven't asked for anyone to speak. It, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? All right, I will work my good. Is this on? Okay. Perry and Maurice she, her. While I agree that there probably needs to be a mechanism to remove the appointed members, we should not uh, prohibit the, the appointing body from removing their own appointed members. We should perhaps increase the ability to remove those members, but we should not decrease it. Points of information. Okay, there's been a request for information. Would removing the word only uh, from this accomplish what the proposer? So the question is if the, removing the word only from this would accomplish what the proposer is After. Members saying. of the Mark Protection Committee may be right. removed by a two-thirds vote of the committee. It, doesn't, it mandates two paths for removing yeah. uh, members of the committee. Correct. I believe that such an amendment would accomplish that, though I would remind the body that 
per rule, second order amendments are not generally allowed. I am also going to temporarily turn the, chur the chair over to the deputy chair because I need to take a quick fire break. So I will leave you all in warm hands. Suspend the rules. Lisa Hayes, she, her. According to what I'm reading in this, this would fix the problem that's put in the back where it said, there should be a means for removing any group or appropriate. We feel this does not uh, need for appointed members who can be removed by the appointed convention at any time. So this would put that back in. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the amendment? Second order. Ron Oaks, he, him, I'm concerned that without the word only in there, this provides an alternative mechanism for elected members to be removed. Thank you. Are there any speeches in favor of the amendment, the second order amendment? Is your hand raised to make a speech or just a stretch? Oh, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. I have to keep my hand all there. All right, I'm hearing that. Are there any, is there anyone else who would like to speak against the amendment? The second order amendment. Thank you. Are We're pausing for the secretary. I, I will recognize you when the secretary gives me clearance. I am in favor of groups 
having some control over themselves. Um, I just disagree with what I was about to say. So please ignore that. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the, uh, the second over amendment? Anyone else against the second over amendment? Hearing none, the question before us is the second order amendment, which would make the amendment additionally strike the word only from section 1.8.7. All those in favor of the second order amendment, please raise a hand. Thank you. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The amendment now is to strike both the word elected at the beginning of the sentence and the word only from the sentence in 1.8.x. How much time is remaining? Uh, in favor of the first order amendment, 24 seconds against 46 seconds. All right, do we have any speeches remaining in favor of the amendment? <coughs> is there anyone which is to speak against the amendment? Yes. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you've now in a position, if you pass this amendment, there's an implication that there's some other way to remove members because you've taken out the restriction that it's only applicable by, the, by way of the MPC. I don't think we want to do that. I don't think there should be any other way to remove members from the committee other than by the appointing authority for the appointed members or by the MPC itself for the elected members. You've opened up a can of worms. No. Thank you. Are there any speeches in favor of the amendment? Uh, Mr. Pomerantz, I believe you were the first actor to speak. Respectfully, that is not how I would interpret that if I were asked to provide um, an interpretation of this. Okay. In order to remove somebody, I would need to have some sort of explicit authority to do so. As far as I know, this is the only explicit authority to do so Ten in the seconds. Constitution. Do we have any other speeches against the amendment? Would anyone like to use the 10 seconds to make a speech for the amendment? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment to strike both the word elected and the word only from section 1.x, 8.x. Those in favor of the amendment, please raise a hand. Thank you. Those opposed to the amendment, please raise a hand. The ayes have it, and the underlying motion is amended to strike those two words. We have 10 seconds of remaining debate time for and 11 seconds of remaining debate time against the underlying motion. Do we have a speech in favor of the underlying motion? Do we have a speech against the underlying motion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote on the underlying motion. Those in favor of passing for the first passage, F.4 MPC procedures, please raise a hand. Thank you. Those opposed to passing F.4 MPC procedures, please raise a hand. The ayes have it, and the first passage of F.4 has been achieved. It will be passed on to Seattle. Okay. It is 2.46 p.m. The next item before us would be F.10.A, which is the portion of F.10 that we didn't get rid of. It's the software committee stuff. This is one of the areas where we had some fun yesterday. So I feel like we don't want to take it up. Looking at this list, are any of the members of F.17 editorial alignment in the room? And then I don't think it would be fair to take that up. I really don't want to just get rid of 15 minutes on our schedule. 
No. Do you, Mary Ann, do you have a motion to make? Uh, no, I have a question. Okay, ask your question. I'm not sure how to say this, but do we have the results from the election for the uh, committee? The committee yes. I do not believe so. Turns out counting seven seats and 14 nominees by hand is take some time. We will have it tomorrow morning. We'll finish counting after this. Yeah, we did the Mark Protection Committee. Unless anybody has a great idea of something they think we can get done in 12 minutes, I think we're going to adjourn a little early today. Okay. The MPC, no, we don't have the committee investigation, that's what was just asked, and we don't have, we already did the MPC. So, what is your question? Uh, I was going to point out that there is a fair chance that if 19 and 20 were brought up, they would be referred to committee and therefore uh, dealt with. Given that we have two um, constitutional changes before us that directly conflict with each other, it doesn't feel like the sort of thing we're going to handle in 12 minutes. Um, so I'm going to say that we are adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow.